You might be looking in your hands and saying, where's the machzor? Where's the prayer book? Well, it's on PowerPoint, so it's easy enough. I ask you to join us as we begin our prayer service with the Matovu. Matovu, O Yaakov, Mishkenotecha Israel, Va'ani Benrov Chastecha, Avovetecha, Eshtachave. El Hechal Kachicha Beiratecha. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. O Lord, through your abundant kindness, I will enter your house. In awe, I will bow down toward your holy sanctuary. Would you please stand for the Shema? Baruch Hu et Adonai HaMevorach Baruch Adonai HaMevorach Le'olam Va'ed Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One for all eternity. Shema Yisrael Adonai Vietnam, 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 
Vita da, Vita le, Vita la, Schmed kucha brichu, Le ela, Min kobechata vishirata, Tush bechata venechemata, Da miram beolma, Veimru, Amen. O se shalom bim romal, Hu ya se shalom aleinu, Veyalko Israel, Veimru, Imru, Amen. May his great name grow exalted and sanctified, in the world that he created as he willed, in your lifetimes and in your days, and in the lifetimes of all the house of Israel, swiftly and soon, and we say, Amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever. Blessed, praised, glorified, exalted, extolled, mighty, upraised, and lauded, be the name of the Holy One, blessed is he. Beyond any blessing and song, praise and consolation that are uttered in the world, and we say, Amen. He who makes peace in his heights, may he make peace upon us and upon all Israel, and we say, Amen. You may be seated. Again the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first of the month, you shall have a rest, a reminder by blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall not do any laborious work, but you shall present an offering by fire to the Lord. Together, sing for joy to God our strength. Shout joyfully to the God of Jacob. Raise a song, strike the timbrel, sweet sounding lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our feast day, for it is a statue for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. Please stand for the Amidah. Join me. Adonai Svatai Tiltach, Fiagiti Latecha. O Lord, open my lips, that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohe Aloteinu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov. Ha'el ha'gadol ha'gibor ve'hanora El el yon Gomel chasadim tovim Ve'kone ha'kol Ve'zoche chasdei avot U'mevi goel l'chnei b'neihem Le'man shemo be'ahava Zachreinu le'chaim Melech ha'fez Yeshua, 
Blessed are you, Lord our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, the most high God, who bestows grace and creates all, and remembers the kindnesses of the fathers, and brings a redeemer to their children's children, for his name's sake, with love. Remember us for life, King of desire of life, and write us into the book of life, for your sake, O living God. O King, Helper, Savior, and Shield, blessed are you, O Lord, Shield of Abraham. You are mighty forever, O Lord. You raise the dead. You are mighty to save. You sustain the living with kindness, resurrect the dead with abundant mercy, support the fallen, heal the sick, release the confined, and maintain faith to those asleep in the dust. Who is like you, O master of mighty deeds? And who is comparable to you, O king who causes death and restores life and makes salvation sprout? Blessed are you, O Lord, who resurrects the dead. Nikadesh Hashim Gaba Olam, Keshem Shimakdishim, O Tobish Maimad Rome. Kakatu vayad neviecha, vikaraze elze veyamar. Kadosh, 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 Adonai tzvaot, melochul haaretz kevodo. Lehumatam baruch yomeru, Baruch Yibor Arunai Mim Komo Mim Kom Cham Al Kenu Tofia Vetim Lo Chalenu Ki Mechakim Anach Nulach Matai Tim Loch Betzion Bekarov Beyamenu Leolam Vaed Tishkon Tit Kadal Vetit Kadash Betochirusha Layemicha Ledor Vador Ledor Vador Ule Netzak Netzachim Netzachim Veene Nu Tirena Tirena Malchutecha Kadavar Haamur Beshire Uzecha Ayede David Mashiach Tzidkecha Yimloch Adonai Leolam Elohai Yichtzion Ledor Vador Hallelujah Join me in the translation. We will sanctify your name in this world even as it is sanctified in the heavens above, as it is written by your prophet, and they call to each other, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Those facing them say, Blessed. Blessed is the glory of the Lord from his place. From your heavenly abode you will appear, O our King, and reign over us, for we wait for you. When will you reign in Zion? Soon, even in our days, may you dwell there forever and ever. May you be exalted and sanctified within Jerusalem, your city, from generation to generation and for all eternity. May our eyes see your kingdom as it is expressed in the songs of your might by the hand of David, your righteous anointed. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, from generation to generation. Hallelujah. Join us for Sim Shalom. Sim, Sim, Sim Shalom. Sim Shalom Toba Uvracha. Sim, Sim, Sim Shalom Toba Toba Uvracha. Sim, Sim, Sim Shalom. 
Simchalon Toba Uvracha Sim 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 Shalom Toba Toba Uvracha Reva Chesed Veracha Mimaleinu Veal Ko Yisrael Amecha Barfeinu Avinu Kulanu Keecha Veor Panecha Sim, 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 shalom, sim, shalom, toba, uvracha, sim, 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 shalom, toba, toba, uvracha, sim, 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 shalom, sim, shalom, toba, uvracha, sim, 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 shalom. Toba, toba, uvracha. Chaim ha-chesed v'racha mimaleinu v'yal ko Yisrael ha-mecha. Borcheinu avinu kulanu keecha v'yor panecha. Sim, sim, sim shalom. Sim shalom, toba, uvracha. Sim, sim, shalom, toba, toba, uvracha. Sim, 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 shalom, sim, shalom, toba, uvracha. Sim, 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 shalom, toba, toba, uvracha. Establish peace, good goodness, blessing. Grace, kindness, and compassion upon us and upon all of your people, Israel. Bless us, our Father, all of us as one, with the light of your countenance. Join us in Avinu Malkeinu. Avinu Malkeinu, Chaneinu Vaneinu, Avinu. Takia, Stephen, come forward to the Vima. Before Stephen sounds the shofar, we say the blessing. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kiddushanu B'Mashiach Yeshua, Betzivanu Lishmoa Kol Shofar. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, 
who has sanctified us in Messiah Yeshua and has instructed us to sound the shofar. At this time, please stand as Stephen is going to sound successions of Tekiah Shvarim, Teruah, and Tekiah three times. He's going to sound Tekiah, Shvarim, and Tekiah again three times in succession. Just yet. Not just yet. <laughs> Sorry. Not about just that. yet. Whoops. Okay, now he's going to sound Takia, Terua, and Takia twice, and then he'll finish with Takia, Terua, and the great one, Takia Gadola. Now you may be seated. Please read uh, responsibly in the yellow print. The earth is the Lord's and all it contains, the world and those who dwell in it. For he had founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to falsehood, and has not sworn deceitfully. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of those who seek him, who seek his face, even Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. He who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone possesses immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, who no man has seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. Please stand. Stephen sounds Tekiah Shvarim, Teruah, and Tekiah. Seated. Who is a God like you who pardons iniquity and passes over the rebellious acts of the remnant of his possession? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in unchanging love. He will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. Yes, you will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. You will give truth to Jacob and unchanging love to Abraham, which you did swore to our forefathers from the days of old. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Messiah Yeshua. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Messiah Yeshua is he who died. Yes, rather, he who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, 
who also intercedes for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Messiah? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? But in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Messiah Yeshua our Lord. Please stand. Receive it'll sound to Kia, Shivarim, and to Kia. You may be seated. This next section is Shofar Rot. He manifested himself with the sound of the Shofar, the Lord amidst the sound of the Shofar, with trumpets and the sound of the Shofar. Shout before the Lord, your King. Sound the shofar at the new moon, at the full moon for our feast day, for it is a statute unto Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. When the shofar is sounded, listen, all you inhabitants of the world. And he will send forth his angels with a great shofar, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last shofar. For the shofar will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall all be changed. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the shofar of God. And the dead in Messiah shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Please stand. Stephen will now sound to Kia, to Ruah, and finally to Kia Gedola. <laughs> Now move in the section of our Torah service. Please join me. Ein kamo chava Elohim Adonai ve'ein kemasecha malchut cha malchut ko olamim u'mamshatcha bechol dor vador Adonai melech Adonai. Ram Venisa, 
Adon Olamim. Father of compassion, do good to Zion according to your will. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, for we trust in you alone, O King, God, exalted and uplifted, Master of worlds. Please stand as we open the Aram Kodesh. Join me. By he been so a haron, by your mermoshe, Kuma Adonai, the Afusu Oebecha, the Anusu Mesanecha, me pane. Shayakira Ana Emar Tushbechan Yehe Rava Kadamach Detif Tachli Bai Be Oraita Vitashli Mishalin Deli Bai Veli ba de cholamach Yisrael Letav l'chayin v'lishlam 
Amen. In him do I trust, and to his glorious and holy name do I declare praises. May it be your will that you open my heart to your Torah, and that you fulfill the desires of my heart and the heart of your entire people Israel. For good, good for life and for peace. Amen. Do this responsively. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Echad. Eloheinu, Gadol Adoneinu, Kadoshemo. Echad Eloheinu, Gadol Adoneinu, Kadoshemo. Gadlu la shemiti, un romema shemo yachdav. God la shemiti, umro memashemo yachtah. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. One is our God, great is our Lord, holy is his name. One is our God, great is our Lord, holy is his name. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. And please join us in L'cha Adonai HaGadullah. L'cha Adonai HaGadullah, V'HaGadullah, V'HaTiferet, V'HaNetzach, V'HaHod, Ki Kol Bashamayi, This morning, this first day of Rosh Hashanah, is from the book, Sefer Breshit, book of Genesis. I'm going to read from Genesis 21, 1 to 3, this morning. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamavorach. Baruch Adonai Hamavorach Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Hamavorach Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim. Benatan Lanu Et Horato. Baruch Ata Adonai. 
Notain HaTorah. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed, blessed is, is the Lord, Lord, the Blessed One, forever and ever. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and gave us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Varonai, pakare tsara, ka ashera mar, vaya saronai, le sara, ka asher diber, vatahar, vateled sara, le avraham, pain. Liz kunav la moed asher di beroto Elohim vayikra Avraham et shem beno hanolad lo asher yada lo sara The English translation. Then Hashem took note of Sarah as he had said, and Hashem did for Sarah as he had promised. So Sarah conceived and bore a son to Avraham in his old age, at the appointed time of which God had spoken to him. And Avraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Yitzchak. Baruch atah Aronai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu Torah emet, vechaye olam natabi Yeshua mishicheinu. Baruch atah Aronai, noten haTorah. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the Universe, who has given us a Torah of truth and eternal life in Yeshua our Messiah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Will you please stand as Jerry raises the Torah for us all? It's a heavy Torah. Vezod ha Torah, Asher Samoshe. Lifne bene Yisrael al pi Adonai pi Yad Moshe. And this is the Torah that Moses placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord by the hand of Moses. Please remain standing for a moment. may be seated. <laughs> the Haftarah reading on this first day of Rosh Hashanah comes from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 1. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher bachar bin vi'im tovim V'ratzav v'divrehem ha-ne'emarim be'emet Baruch atah Adonai Ha-bocher b'atorah U'v'moshe avdo U'v'yisrael amo U'v'invi'ei ha-emet v'atzedek Amen Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who selected good prophets and was pleased with their words which were spoken truthfully. Blessed are you, O Lord, who chooses the Torah, your servant Moses, your people Israel, 
and prophets of truth and righteousness. Vayehi ish echad min haramatayim tzofim meha efrayim ushmo el kana ben yerocham ben elihu ben tochu ben suf Ephrati Belo Steinashim Shemachat Chana Vashem Hashenit Pnina Vaihi Lifni Na Yeladim Ulchana En Yeladim Veala Aish Hahu Meiro Miyamim yamima lehish tachavot velis boach lado night sevaot beshilo vesham shne venei eli chofni ufin chas. Kohanim Ladonai. The translation. Now there was a certain man from Ramatayim Sofim, from the hill country of Ephraim. And his name was Elkanah, the son of Yerocham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Tzuf, an Ephraimite. He had two wives. The name of one was Chana. The name of the other, Penina. And Penina had children, the Chana had no children. Now this man would go up from his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Chofni, and Pinchas were priests to Hashem there. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Tzur koch ha'olamim, tzadik b'choch ha'dorot, ha'el ha'neeman, ha'omer ve'oseh, ha'medaper u'mekayim, she'kol d'varav emet v'atzedek. Ne'eman atahu Adonai Eloheinu, v'ne'emanim d'varecha, v'davar echad mitvarecha, Acholo yashuv reikam, ki el melech ne'eman, v'rachaman ata, baruch ata Adonai, ha'el ha'ne'eman, b'chod devarav. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, rock of all eternities, faithful in all generations, the trustworthy God, who says and does, who speaks and makes it come to pass, all of whose words are true and righteous. Faithful are you, O Lord our God, and faithful are your words, for not one word of yours is turned back unfulfilled. You, for you are a faithful and compassionate God and King. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God who is faithful in all his words. If you please stand. So we return the Torah to the Aron Kodesh. Join us in Eitz Chaim. Eitz Chaim.
those who take hold of it, and those who support it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Bring us back to you, O Lord, and we shall come. Renew our days as of old. Please remain standing just for a moment. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, I want to thank uh, David Taylor and Jerry for leading us in our worship. Uh, appreciate so very much your uh, wonderful efforts and service to God. I appreciate that so very much. Uh, we want to take a look at an unusual portion of scripture. Uh, it has to do with the book of Nehemiah uh, for uh, Rosh Hashanah. Uh, the first of the year, uh, we find that as we read this portion together, you'll realize that when we came out of Babylon, even though we had adopted certain Babylonian words and other things of that sort, we still understood for quite a long time uh, that it was the first day of the seventh month. The first day of the seventh month. And so in the book of Nehemiah, we'll be taking a look at how they observed, how they observed uh, the Feast of Trumpets, which is the first day of the seventh month. I'd like us to read the scripture together. Please stand, if you will. Uh, there's a couple of slides, so don't uh, backslide sitting down too quickly, unless you need to, in which case, okay. Uh, let's read this in unison. Here we go. And all the people gathered as one man at the square, which was in front of the water gate. And they asked Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the Torah of Moses, which Hashem had given to Israel. Then Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly of men and women, and all who could listen with understanding. Day, the seventh month. They read from the book from the Torah of God, translating to give the sense so that they understood the reading. Then Nehemiah, who was governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to Hashem your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people were weeping when they heard the words of the Torah. Then he said to them, Go, eat of the fat, drink of the sweet, and send portions to the poor. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be still, for the day is holy. Do not be grieved. All the people went away to eat, to drink, to send portions, and to rejoice greatly, because they understood the words which had been made known to them. Let's pray. Avinu, we thank you for uh, this day, this Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, as we traditionally say, the new year. Uh, but we also recognize uh, the values that Scripture places upon it, and that we might not merely uh, be people who celebrate traditionally or ceremonially, but we take their values to heart, that we might live out these same values. And as we understand it and appreciate the meaning of this day in your sight, uh, we might therefore not only rejoice, but also be an instrument of your blessing to others. So add your blessing and give the increase to my meager words that Yeshua will be exalted and lifted up, for it's in his mighty name that we pray. Amen. Please be seated, if you will. And so as we consider the matters of the day, uh, you know, what is a sad occasion for us, and why we probably, you're wondering, why would they grieve? Well, here's one reason why they may have grieved. Uh, the Jewish New Year is 5782. Is that right, Harvey? Harvey is 82, so every year he reminds me what year it is. 
but the Chinese New Year is only 4719. Sadly, we went without kosher Chinese food for 1,063 years. I don't know how we made it. Okay, pray for some new jokes. Thank you, Lori, for the pity laugh. I appreciate that so much. And so Rosh Hashanah is the traditional name for the biblical Feast of Trumpets. And so there are many joyous traditions uh, for this holy day and holiday uh, as we worship God. And last night uh, we saw, you know, little children near honey. Mm, not a pretty sight. But nonetheless, a lot, we traditionally eat apples and honey and, of course, uh, honey cakes, which is my favorite. And so we do that to wish one another a sweet year in the Lord. Uh, and though for many people entering into whatever may be called a new year, uh, there may be still many difficulties. Uh, COVID is raging uh, all around uh, the country and the world. Uh, many of us over the course of you know, a year ago, uh, we were writing up, we were posting to one another, do you know anyone who has COVID? No one posts anything like that this year because all of us know one, sometimes in our family, et cetera, uh, who have COVID. And so there are many difficulties that we bring along with us into a, a new year. And so we may wish one another uh, for joy in the new year, which is our desire, of course. Uh, but you may wonder what in the new year will actually make it joyous. You say, well, why? Well, COVID is raging, issues are arising, all kinds of problems in this world, uh, all sorts of matters. Our country still uh, is under this nation, which I'm very thankful for compared to all other nations, but this nation is under the judging hand, the judgment of God for the 600,000 murders that are committed in mother's wombs every year. And though we may want better, we got to pray for revival and repentance accordingly. And so as we look at it, we may say with all these problems, how can we actually with a you know, straight face, how can we actually expect there to be joy? I mean, we got all these issues, I know. But we also know someone who's greater than the problem. Someone who's greater than Goliath. David could be confident in the Lord, and so can we, because we are here to make a difference in the world that we are in. We're here to make a difference, to show his grace as being sufficient for us. And so uh, we want to understand the joy amidst the oi. Uh, let me give you a little background on the section. Ezra and Nehemiah had uh, not too long before brought our people out of uh, Persia back into Judea after they were released. Under Ezra's leadership, if you read the book of Ezra, they had rebuilt the altar. That was the first priority. Rebuild the altar for worship to God, for sacrifices to be made in order to have forgiveness. And then with Nehemiah, uh, he came back under his leadership. They rebuilt uh, the walls around Jerusalem. If you go to Israel, the Western Wall, the Wailing Wall, as it's called, is the last remaining element of that wall that Nehemiah had built, but actually was built up even more, if you remember, uh, from, by Herod. But still, nonetheless, uh, he built the wall. And now, on the first day of the seventh month, on the first day of the seventh month, still understanding it uh, to be on a biblical calendar as such, uh, they gathered for the Feast of Trumpets, what we call Rosh Hashanah. And so his people then no longer spoke Hebrew. They had been 70 years in bondage uh, in Babylon and Persia. And so they, read, uh, they had a different, somewhat different language called Aramaic. And so regarding that, uh, the Kohanim and the Levites all were translating the message, the teaching from the Torah into Aramaic. Why? Because it had to be understood. That's why everything we do in Hebrew must be translated. So people can say, amen with a whole heart, it must be understood. And so the word understood, uh, 
uh, in the Hebrew is used six times uh, and is the, the theme of the section. Uh, to understand the word of God is of vital importance. Now Yeshua said that the truth will set you free. But I have to say it can only set you free if you understand it. If you understand it. And if your heart is hardened before God, uh, you may not understand it, though I speak a language most can comprehend. It's a little bit different, a little New Yorkese, so a different dialect of English, but nonetheless, you can mostly understand it. And so uh, this New Year portion helps us to understand how to truly and freely live. Uh, understand as well, if you will, the outline. We always have outlines. You say, why do you have outlines? Listen carefully. Because the scriptures are rational. Because the scriptures are laid out in such a way to be understood. And therefore, it is laid out in an orderly form. And if you study it, you can see the outline of thoughts within the text itself. Uh, when God uh, inspired the scriptures, he did something quite amazing. He inspired words, words, words. Not music. We don't know the tunes to David's psalms, his songs. Uh, not pictures. We have no pictures in, in the Torah. Uh, but God inspired words. It's rational. It's understandable. And therefore, you're without excuse to understand it. And also, uh, you must understand as well that we are responsible for what we hear. Let me ask you all a question. Uh, the mighty righteous remnant who didn't go to work today or uh, quit your jobs to serve God, or whatever. Uh, how many of you would follow the Bible uh, if the Holy Spirit will illuminate uh, your minds to its truth? Raise your hand. You say, yes, I will follow the scriptures. If, if I, the Holy Spirit illuminates my mind and heart, uh, I would actually... Uh, you know, I would actually honor the Lord accordingly. Well, keep me in prayer as I hopefully will communicate some of what the scriptures is talking about here. In the outline, the scripture, you understand grace living is sorrowless. Once you understand the grace in which we stand, once you understand uh, the grace that's all sufficient for us, then you'll also understand why we're to be a light in the darkness and not curse the darkness. Why we live in a moral, fallen world, but nonetheless we are called to be a light in the darkness because grace living is sorrowless. And faith living is strengthening. God gives us what we need so we can live for him in the day, you say, with all the difficulties, as we say in the middle of all of it, yes, of course, we live for him. And then finally, do the scripture understand that mature living is actually satisfying? The satisfaction of our faith comes as we grow in the Lord uh, and follow him. Uh, getting right down to it, through scripture you understand grace living is sorrowless. I say that because verse 9, uh, as we read, says, This day is holy to Hashem your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of Torah when they heard the words of Torah. And so as we consider the matter of sorrow, first thing to understand from the text itself, sorrow is unsurprising because of our sins. You say, what do you mean? Uh, when they understood the Torah, most, many of our people, many of our people, uh, even as they uh, daven on this day and hearing the words of Torah, may not understand the Torah. It may not be communicated to them in a way that they can comprehend it clearly and understandably. And therefore, they may not be responding as these people responded when the Torah was read to them. Uh, because when they understood the Torah, they understood what the Torah teaches that disobedience brings judgment. And they just came out of Persia. And so the past bondage was a result from their sins, even as was told to them by Jeremiah the prophet before they left, and by the words of the Torah itself. And so they wept and grieved. Why? Because they recognized their sins. 
This is what happens when you understand the teaching of Torah. You say, well, Torah is a, is a, it's a tree of life. Of course, with the sacrifice of Messiah. Without the sacrifice of Messiah, the purpose the Torah was given to uh, Israel is because Israel had received the great promises through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And because of those great promises, God wanted our people to know and absolutely so that our, uh, our relationship with the living God, our calling as a people of God was based on the grace of God. And so the Torah reveals our desperate need for grace and therefore leads us to Messiah and to depend on the sacrifices uh, for our souls. And so they wept and grieved over their sins, as is only right to do. Uh, last Shabbat, uh, one man came to faith in Yeshua, and he, when he came to understand his own sinfulness and the forgiveness of God, he wept for joy uh, over the matter. Well, that's, that's something else. But nonetheless, let's understand, uh, the city wall was built. The city wall was built when they're weeping here. Why? Because they realized <laughs> the wall couldn't keep God out. <laughs> it couldn't keep God out. And so many of us, I don't know the lives we, we all live, but I would say that maybe you've built security systems or whatever you have to insulate yourself uh, from the Holy One of Israel. Maybe you kind of think, well, I can keep him at arm's distance or whatever else. That is futile, impossible. There's no way to do such thing. Nothing can keep out the Holy One of Israel. And when you realize that you are unholy, you therefore have to surrender to the truth of your own sinfulness and your deep regret, pain, and sorrow over your sins. But as we read on in here, we'll understand how that applies uh, for some of us. And so without experiencing Messiah's grace and forgiveness, Torah brings guilt and sorrow. That was its purpose and fulfilled its role accordingly. And so the uh, second point from this verse, uh, sorrow is unacceptable. You'll notice what they said to the people when they wept. Uh, the, the sorrow is unacceptable uh, because of our salvation. Uh, that the atoning blood sacrifice for their sins had been made that very day uh, on the altar that Ezra previously built. Let's read, if we will, uh, the scripture from Ezra 3.6. From the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to Hashem. First day of the seventh month. They had an offering for sins made for their souls. They had an offering for sins made for their souls. Please notice the dates, if you will. And so the point of the portion, and this is something for us to be mindful of, that it's wrong to grieve when God has forgiven your sins. It's also wrong to rejoice uh, when you think that you're getting away with sins getting away with telling lies, getting away with deception, getting away with pretension. All of those things are a vanity of your soul and you self-deceive yourself to think that you can put on a talit, uh, put on a, a yarmulke, and therefore be right before God. No one is fooled. You shouldn't fool yourself. And so joy is from trusting in his forgiveness, for it turns our sorrow into joy, as I have up on the screen as well. You say, I don't understand. Well, let me explain. The Torah clearly surfaces that we fall short of the glory of God. It shows the, the Torah is holy. It shows the holiness of God. But in so doing, it shows that we fall short. It's the same reason why I hate mirrors. You say, why do we hate mirrors? Because it shows me what I look like. It shows me exactly. I'd like to think, 
you know, and as I mentioned last night, I think I'm only 25 years on the inside, regardless of what I look on the outside. But the mirror tells me the facts about my life. Well, so does the Torah. It reveals to us how we fall short in our desperate need for the sacrifice that anticipated the final sacrifice of the Messiah. And so Mashiach's atonement is so great, <laughs> goes beyond our words, so great that it is improper to sorrow in light of it. With all the problems in life, we are called to be salt and light because of the atonement of Yeshua. We cannot do that. We can't make a difference in society apart from his finished work. Just knowing a bunch of things doesn't help you. You don't have what it takes. The Torah gave us the truth of walking with God, but also it included, according to Jeremiah chapter 7, it also therefore included sacrifices because we could not follow the Torah and had to make sacrifices. But we want to appreciate uh, that in light of what Messiah has done for us, there is such a great salvation, such a final work and finished work for our souls that we can now live differently, not because of our willpower, but because of the power of God uh, as we yield ourselves to him in Messiah. And so you can always tell which beggar uh, received millions. It's the one who stopped begging. And so those who recognize what God has done for them, uh, they no longer have to weep over their sins because we have a resource for our sins. And it's in Messiah's grace. And so rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say what? Rejoice. rejoice. Your, your soul should be responding with the joy of the Lord, as we'll read about. And so... Uh, the second point, the truth uh, through scripture, you understand, faith living is strengthening, strengthening. Uh, we want to understand, it's not only sorrowless, it's also strengthening. And so the scripture says, for this day is holy to our Lord, do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. This is probably everyone's favorite verse, uh, but the context of it makes it even more meaningful for those who love it. As we understand, the joy of the Lord is his, his pleasure. Joy from the Lord is his pleasure. And so when we talk about the joy of the Lord, it's God's own joy over our forgiveness. What? What gives God joy is that those that he loves are forgiven. <laughs> this is what gives him joy. He has no joy over a sinner who dies. Not at all. It breaks God's heart. It breaks God's heart. But he has great joy. You say, well, I think I need a big wall to feel secure. No, that's not it at all. You need God's altar for your insecurity so that in place of worry, you will have joy. This is the joy that's spoken of in the Brith Hadashah in the New Covenant, Hebrews 12.2. For the joy set before Yeshua, he endured the cross. That makes no sense at all. If you're going to endure the cross, how can you have joy? How, how can you possibly have joy when you're going to endure the cross? Because he, he looked beyond it. He looked beyond the cross to the results of the cross, to the results of his death, to what his death would mean for those that God loves and therefore that joy, the same joy of the Lord, gave him what he needed, the strength he needed to be able to endure accordingly, to go through the trials of life, to go through the problems of life. And so also as we're called to bear our cross daily, we are crucified with Messiah. And therefore in that we have our strength and the joy that God gives us and that in the midst of it all, to rejoice in the Lord, uh, in a place of worry indeed. And so he says, this day is holy. Well, make up your mind. Is it holy or joyful? I mean, one or the other, right? Most of us have a wrong idea about holiness. We have a wrong idea about holiness. We think that holiness is kind of like sadness and 
beating yourself up. Nothing can be farther from the truth because of what Yeshua has done for us. Uh, he, all who believe in him are called holy ones, saints. We are all living out the holiness of God uh, as we walk and follow Yeshua. And holiness uh, produces happiness. That's the point of the verse. Otherwise, it would make no sense if holiness was different uh, from the joy of the Lord. Those things could not be said together. But they said, for this day is holy uh, to uh, the Lord, our Lord. Do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. For those who understand the forgiveness we have in Messiah, we want to understand also that we have in holy living greater joy. The more we live for God, the more consecrated. As we set apart our time, our talent, our treasure, our thought life unto God, the more we do that, setting it apart unto God, the more joy in the Lord we experience. Holiness produces happiness. And so as we faithfully live uh, each day as holy, as set apart unto God, as honoring to him, uh, every day can be a day of joy, of happiness in your soul. You say, but you don't know the circumstances. Of course I know the circumstances. I live in the same world you do. I'm just saying there's someone bigger than Goliath. That's who you look to and trust in as you count it all joy in the Lord. All the different trials counted all joy, the joy of the Lord and the finished work of Messiah, God's perfect work for each of us. And so the Feast of Trumpets signifies the last trump. You know, Takiyah, God alone. Every time I hear the last Takiyah, I'm just ready to, to leave the building, you know. Uh, I'm always disappointed. I have to come back up here and now teach because I know where I want to be. But I'm created where I'm created to be. So, but the Feast of Trumpets signifies the last trump. And I don't know whether it be today, tomorrow, sometime this year, when the Lord calls us as a body uh, to meet him in the air, uh, in the resurrection uh, of the believers, uh, whatever he would want, this may be the last time the Feast of Trumpets is being observed. Our full redemption uh, of our bodies as well. So this is the Lord's own joy for those, uh, for those of us that are set before him. And so uh, in his person, the joy is based on, on who he is, not who we are. That's where many of our problems lie. You can have self-loathing. You can live in self-loathing when you think that you are your sins. No, God makes a distinction between you and your sins. Someone, because of my issues, wondered if I hated myself. I said, no, I, no, I, I'm not permitted to. That's improper. Not at all. I, no, with the same love that God has to me, I love myself. My sins I hate. <laughs> I don't hate me. <laughs> not at all. Uh, so, yeah, you have to make that distinction, even as God makes that distinction. Because it's, our faith is in who he is, not in who we are. Uh, it's a joy of his perfections, of his great love, uh, of his righteousness, of his integrity. He cannot lie. You can trust in his faithfulness, not your own. This is what actually makes the difference, a joy of the Lord himself the salvation and the promises he has given us. He himself is the object of our everlasting joy. And so for believers, as we mature in the Lord, the maturity is going to be seen that more and more and more, Yeshua, listen carefully, is the object of your faith. You run the race set before you with endurance, looking unto Yeshua, abiding in Yeshua, depending on him more and more and more. And when you go through situations, we must all be careful of being distracted and getting our eyes off the Lord and therefore having as a focus of faith something that cannot secure us, cannot save us, cannot satisfy us. Only the Lord. So as we mature in the Lord, more and more, you're depending on him, relying on him, not as easily distracted by the issues of this life. He's the object of our faith and our, our praise.
And so when I'm flying in planes, as I tend to do, I go, we get some choppy air, you know, all kinds of problems up there. I look at the flight attendants. Uh, if they are kind of smiling, you know, enjoying life, despite the fact the plane is going like this, I feel secure because they would know if there was a real problem. I was on a flight where I saw, you know, the flight attendants acting like hair on fire, hair on fire. I then prayed even harder, I'm telling you now. Lord, I'm coming to you. But when the flight attendants are uh, smile and joy, this gives me confidence in the midst of a choppy fly, in the midst of turbulence. And life is full of turbulence. That's all we have is turbulence, like sparks flying up to heaven. So in a, in a, a rough flight, uh, his word, uh, we look to the Lord. His word is true and dependable. This is what the scriptures are teaching us about the Feast of Trumpets and even Rosh Hashanah as we understand it. This is the issue. God is our security when we look to him. Die to self when we're looking to him. When you look to his finished work, you are therefore dying to yourself, dying to your own preferences, dying to your own fears and all the other security systems you may have. And so it says here he is our strength. Glory to God. And so uh, the joy with the Lord is his place of power. He is our place of refuge, ma'oz, uh, in the original language. Ma'oz, our fortress, our stronghold. He is our stronghold. Uh, he is the place, place of safety, our protection. Uh, you know, uh, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. He's our safe place. Uh, not uh, the walled city. That, that couldn't help them. Didn't help them with the Babylonians. Certainly can't help them. Uh, in any case, it's, the walls were a testimony of their trust in God. That's where our securities need to be a testimony to our trust in the Lord himself. Uh, our protection, our joy in the Lord's victory and saving power, our place of refuge. And so the relationship with God is the security of Israel. The relationship with God is the security of Israel. We pray all the time for the peace of Jerusalem, something we do ordinarily as a people, as a community. Uh, but we understand that true security for Israel is only in the relationship with God. That's what is the security for all of our lives. And his promises are for those who relate to him, who trust in him. And so Israel making a peace treaty with terrorists, bad news, bad news. Uh, and never going to be key to Israel's security, no matter what the terrorists may tell you or think or say. They are not trustworthy. Why? They're terrorists. You say, well, isn't it good that the United States supports Israel? That would be good. That's, I pray for that. That would be good. But the hope of Israel is not in the United States. It's not in Israel's best... Uh, it's not in Israel's... Uh, best welfare for the United States to support Israel. It's in the United States' best welfare to support Israel, to be on God's side of history and eternity, to trust in what God has said we should trust in and depend on and support those he calls us to, to support. And so God's peace treaty, Brit Hadashah, the new covenant with Messiah, this is the peace treaty that will be peace to Israel for your family and for your soul as well. It's our Israel's security blanket, as you know. And so in your heart and home, is it a place of forgiveness and power? That's the question. Uh, that in Messiah, uh, your family knows uh, that the joy of the Lord is our strength, is their strength uh, for all who trust in him. You say, well, I'm not sure about that. Well, maybe you need to pray about that to make it so, to model the truth of Scripture, the values that we read regarding uh, the first day of the seventh month. And so if it's not, ask the Lord why it's not, and ask the Lord to help you grow. Last thought before we close in prayer. Uh, through scripture you understand that mature living is satisfying. People often say, why do I not enjoy the Lord or be satisfied? Well, as you depend on him more and more, you actually enjoy him more and more. 
as we've often noted, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, and peace, are the fruit of the Spirit, the result, the consequence of the Spirit. The root of the Spirit is abiding in Yeshua, depending on Yeshua. That produces the fruit. The more you abide in them, the more fruit you will bear. Joy, love, peace, etc. And so it says here to rejoice greatly, even as a, on the prophecy of our Messiah, entering into Jerusalem on the colt of a donkey. Rejoice greatly. He's the one in which we rejoice greatly in because of who he is and what he's done for us. And so the mature are satisfied by the Lord's salvation, knowing, you know, they stopped grieving at this point, and so the people went away to rejoice greatly, uh, knowing their sacrifices have atoned for their sins. You say, is that what makes a difference? It's the only thing that will make a difference. Uh, false, you know, people telling you strange things like, oh, it's not so bad, you're a fine person. Don't listen to false counsel. The only way of joy and uh, fullness of life is in the, in, the, in the sacrifice of our Messiah, ultimately. And so their sins were atoned for, they rejoiced before Adonai, and those trusting in, the Lord, in Yeshua's final atonement rejoice uh, in him all the time, in all ways, in all times and ways, knowing our names are written in the Lamb's book of life, may his name be blessed. And so the mature are satisfied uh, for the Lord's celebration. To eat the fat, I, I try to obey scripture as best I can, to eat the fat, drink of the sweet, uh, I always live out the values of scripture. I'm just telling you right now. Okay. Uh, and so we want to understand what this is. It's a code for celebrate the Lord's goodness. God is good. When we say he is gracious towards us, he has goodness towards you. He loves you, cares about you. Uh, as beat up as you may be from the world that we live in, God cares about you, can bring healing to your soul. And only the biblically assured can rejoice with a whole heart. This is where maturity comes in. Those who have this deep assurance of who God is, what he has done for us, the finished work accordingly. So Yeshua's disciples uh, live to the praise of his glory as well. And so sending portions to the poor. Uh, we are to care about the poor. Uh, giving out, uh, living out the gratitude to Adonai being gracious to others, recipients of his grace, are gracious people, instruments of his grace to those who are uh, the disenfranchised in our society. We care about them, we want to help them do what we can accordingly. And what made the difference? Uh, not merely the work of Hashem, but because they understood the words. In other words, Yeshua's finished work about 2,000 or so years ago doesn't help anyone if they don't understand it. If they don't understand that the provision has been made. But they have to understand what God has done for them. And so because they understood the words, therefore they could rejoice in the Lord and the sacrifice that had been made for them. This is our calling as well. And so when we teach uh, the Hebrew Bible and English so people can understand the words, this is why Messiah, the living Torah, came in the flesh so we could understand his love in only a way we can. He has to look like us and talk like us. And, and, and when he stumbles his toe uh, in, say, ouch, uh, just like we do, uh, freezing in the winter and sweating in the summer, and we saw love manifested, love incarnate. Uh, this is actually the truth that God has revealed uh, to all who believe. And so understanding the words of scripture brought great joy because now they trusted in the author of the scriptures. They understood the words which had been made known to them. Messiah has come just as scripture promised and his message is clearly understood. But you will entrust your life to him and rejoice this year only if you do understand. This year will not be a year of joy if you do not understand what God has done for you and trust in what he has done for you in the Messiah. And so an old story uh, that when the, tel and they, I mean, the telegraph offices are, are no more, uh, that's, you know, getting a telegram, I mean, you know, 
World War II maybe or something. But back in the old days, bear with me on this illustration, back in the old days uh, when there were telegraph offices and people getting telegrams and you had to be able to do Morse code and other things in order to communicate through, through the telegraph uh, system. And so in the telegraph office, uh, there was uh, a guy who was looking for a job, and uh, the place was filled with people looking for jobs. They were all schmoozing with each other. What are you going to do if you don't get work here? I don't know. I tried every other place. They were all talking, commiserating with one another. And all of a sudden, uh, one guy, you know, there's some tapping going on. And one of the people run out of the waiting room into the president's office. And he comes out a couple minutes later just smiling. And they said, what's up with you? He said, well, well, I, I, got, I, got, I got the job. What job? Well, he had tapped out in Morse code, whoever wants the job, come on in. Come on in. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Mi rotze chaye olam. Bo! Whoever wants eternal life, come! Can you understand? Can you understand? Do you get it? Do you understand what God is saying to us on the Feast of Trumpets on the first day of the seventh month? Can you hear the message of the Lord and what he communicated to his people then and now to trust in that sacrifice of Messiah? Well, we want to wish you all a joyous day in the Lord, joyous year, if the Lord be pleased, and that, your, that his name would be glorified in you and that we would bring good news to others this year. Let's pray about that right now. And so, uh, as we bring our hearts before God, as is our custom, we open our heart to God. And so we want to understand, as we study this, we want to understand the Lord's will for our life, uh, to be instruments of grace and good news to others, that in the midst of the misery of this world, we know someone greater than our problems. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we can count it all joy, the joy of the Lord. And though you may be bearing a cross, going through horrible trials and difficulties, I'm not trying to diminish your problems at all, not trying to diminish the pain that you're enduring. I want you to know there's someone bigger than your problems. There is a God who cares about you, who can help you undergird your life. His grace is your sufficiency. He can give you joy in the midst of Taurus. Even now, give your heart to him in prayer. And dear God, we do yield ourselves to you, asking that your name would be glorified, exalted, lifted up, and magnified in the midst of the Taurus of this world, in the horrors that go on around us, with a Delta variant and all sorts of issues, with friends and family getting ill and even some being brought home earlier than we ever would have wanted them to leave. But we look to you and therefore rejoice in you because you are a great God and mighty to be praised and mighty to save us. May your name be glorified and exalted this day, this year, and forever. For in Yeshua's name we pray and with thanksgiving and all of God's people said, Amen. Shana Tovah.